So when you do that, that negative 49 is going to break apart to negative 1 times positive 49. So going back to Thursday, does anybody remember what the square root of negative 1 is equal to? It's equal to a letter. I. I. Yep. Anytime you see a negative 1, that becomes an I. And then 49 is a perfect square. So we don't have to make a cake. So the square root of 49 is what? That's such a light. So you can write that as I7, or you can write that as 7I. So I7 or 7I. I'll take either one. Any questions about that first bell work? And then at the end of class, I'll show you your tests. I think I got them all. So for number two, we need to factor it. Go ahead and make your box. The A goes in the top left. C goes in the bottom right. So this is A, B, C. So you need two numbers that would multiply to be six and add to five. So don't say it out loud. Try to figure out what your numbers would be. What's our numbers that multiply to be six and add to five? Three and two. Yep. So you're going to put three X in one square, two X in the other square. So X squared is the same as X times X. Six is three times two. Go ahead, take out your GCS. So in this top row, we can take out an X. Bottom row, we can take out a two. The first column, we have an X left. Second column, we have a three left. So it would factor down to X plus two times X plus three. All right, go ahead, take out your notes and go to page 10.
So we're going to talk about a complex number. And a complex number is simply a real number plus an imaginary number. All right, so we got a real number and an imaginary number. So let's go ahead. We'll work through page 10, and then you can have time to answer, ask questions, and we can do homework three. Homework three is due tomorrow. All right, so adding and subtracting. If it's adding, all we have to do is combine our like terms. So whenever it's adding, you just combine your like terms. That's it. So for number one, I'm going to add together the four and the two. So what is four plus two? Six. And then you're going to add together your imaginaries, the seven I and the three I, and that'll give you 10 I. And that's your answer. But if it's subtraction... You have to distribute the negative one and then you want to combine your like terms. So the first thing we have to figure out is, is it addition or subtraction? And then after we figure that out, depending on what it is, we'll do our process. So number one was just addition. So all we had to do was combine our like terms. Number two is subtraction. So when it's subtraction, we keep the first parentheses the same. So that would be, is that somebody knocking at the door? Yeah. Okay. We keep our first parentheses the same. So that would be five plus six I. But for our second one, the second parentheses, we have to distribute the negative first. So that means that both of those, the signs in our second parentheses are gonna change. So do you see how this is a positive seven? That's gonna flip to a negative seven. And then the negative three I is gonna become a positive three I. So now we're ready to add our like terms. So we're gonna start with our numbers. So five and negative seven, go ahead, pick up your calculators. Add those two numbers together. So you're adding five plus negative seven. Cause they're like terms. 
So you add the numbers together that don't have an I, and then you add the numbers together that do have an I. So negative two, and now we're gonna add the numbers with the I. Now you can't put the I in your calculator. You can only put the number in the calculator. So it would be a six and a three. Six plus three would be nine. So that would be nine I. That would be your answer to number two. All right, let's look at number three together. So number three is subtraction. So we have to distribute our negative first. So that first parentheses does not change. We never change the first one. It's the second one that gets a makeover. Everything inside that second parentheses gets a makeover. It flips to the opposite. So instead of a positive two, it will become a negative two. Instead of a positive seven I, it changes to a negative seven I. Now combine your like terms. So go ahead, start with the numbers with the, without the I. Add those two numbers together in your calculator. And then you're gonna put together the ones that do have an I. So I'll give you about 60 seconds to figure out what your answer would be and then we'll compare. So the blue numbers that I, the numbers I have underlined in blue are like terms. The numbers that I have underlining green are like terms. So we got the three and the negative two. So that's gonna give you a positive one. And then five and negative seven would be a negative two I. Raise your hand if you had that answer. Any questions about how we did number three? All right, let's go to the second row. Let's look at question four. Do I need to do a sign change for number four or do I just combine like terms? Raise your hand if you say I need to do a sign change. Who says combine like terms? Because this is addition, we only do, we only combine our like terms. So that means that <clears throat> all the signs stay the same. So we got a four and a four that needs to be added together. Four plus four would be eight. And then a positive nine and a negative nine. What is nine minus nine or nine plus negative nine? Nine plus negative nine would be, what'd you say? Zero. So you don't have to put the zero. You could put zero I or you could just say the answer is eight. Either one would be correct. All right, let's look at number five. Do we have to do a sign change or do we just start combining like terms? Who says we uh, do a sign change? Sign change, yeah, because it's subtraction, good. So we're gonna keep this three plus six I and now let's distribute the negative. So that positive three becomes a negative three and the negative three I becomes a positive three I. Go ahead and combine your like terms. So we have the three and the negative three, which is zero. And then I have the positive 6i and the positive 3i, which is a 9i. Or you could just say your answer is 9i. Anytime you have zero as one of your terms, you don't have to write it. All right, last one. And then we um, just got a few short questions and we can start working on our homework. Because of this subtraction sign in front, we have to do a sign change. So the seven I stays the same, let's distribute. The positive four switches to a negative four and the negative two I add it. The negative 
two I switches to a positive two I. All right. So there is only one real number. So there's only one term that doesn't have an I. So that one doesn't have a friend to add to it. So let's go ahead and add our imaginaries. Add seven I and two I. Seven plus two. And what is seven plus two? Nine. Okay, any questions about those six? Let me zoom back out. So that's a part of homework three where you have to add and subtract um, complex numbers. So just remember that if it's addition, you just combine your like terms. If it's subtraction, we have to do a sign change and then combine our like terms. All right, so for our last three, we're just looking to reduce fractions. So let's start off by looking at this first fraction, three over six. Looking at three over six, what does that reduce down to? Does anybody know? Two or one half? One half. Because you have three over six and they can both be divided by three. So that's how we get one half. So this becomes a one root five over two. And that would be your answer. For question B, again, I'm only looking at the numbers not under the square root. So I'm looking at two over seven. Two over seven cannot reduce. So your final answer is the same. It's just going to stay 2 root 7 over 7. That's your final answer. Because 2 over 7 is already reduced as far as it could go. The only thing that goes into 2 and 7 is 1. All right, lastly, let's look at C. 4 over 4. What is what is 4 divided by 4? Okay. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then that root 2 has to say. All right, go ahead, take out homework 3. Homework 3 is due tomorrow. Any questions that you want me to work through with you for homework 3? So I'll give you all a minute to take it out and look it over. Let's see. Going once, going twice. Yes. Number five. That's the one I was thinking that people wouldn't know how to do, but I wasn't going to suggest it if nobody said anything. Let's look at number five. Y equals 5X squared plus 45. Is that the right one? Is that what it says? Let's look at number five together in our homework. So the first thing you want to do, replace that Y with a zero. And let's solve this for X. So in order to solve this equation for X, we're going to start by subtracting five, 45 from both sides. So 0 minus 45 would be negative 45. And now we need to get rid of the 5. How do you think I'm going to get rid of the 5? Am I going to add 5, subtract 5, multiply by 5, or divide by 5? 
which one is going to get rid of this five? Divide. So pick up your calculators, take negative 45, and divide that by five. Positive nine or negative nine? You got a negative 45 divided by five, so that's going to give you a negative nine. I'm going to start writing over here. So negative nine equals x squared. And then we take the square root. So remembering what I said in bell work, if you have a negative underneath a square root, you have to separate it. It's going to separate to negative 1 times 9. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 9 is 3. So this would be your answer. But then it asks you to sketch it. Hold on, let me get some room. When you sketch an imaginary, an imaginary cannot touch the x-axis. So am I gonna sketch a smile or a frown? Raise your hand if you say it's a frown. Who says it's a smile? Uh-oh. Let's, let's see if we can remember. If A is positive, it's a smile. If A is negative, it's a frown. So what is A? Is A positive or negative? Positive. So is it going to be a smile or a frown? A smile. So all you have to do is draw a smile that doesn't touch the x-axis. That's, that's all you can do for a question like this. Anytime x is imaginary, you can't make a table. I mean, you could make a table, but that would be doing too much. All you have to do is sketch a smile that doesn't cross the x-axis. All right, any other homework questions? All right, use this time to work on your homework. It is due tomorrow.